In this demonstration, we're going to show you how to build a standalone solution using Altova Mobile to get a designer. This is important because sometimes you want to be able to run mobile solutions on your mobile device without a server connection. For example, when you have a bad network connectivity or outside uh, cell phone reception area, and you still want to use your mobile solutions, uh, you can do that with standalone solutions that do not need a server backend. So we'll start here uh, by clicking on a new button to create our new mobile solution. And for this example, what we're going to build is a simple tip calculator that you can use at a restaurant. Um, what we're going to do, uh, since we do not want to use a server connection, is we're going to use the persistent tree here uh, on the page sources to store our data. The persistent tree is stored on each client device um, and can be used to uh, capture the data there uh, that still persists between different runs of the mobile solution. So here, under the root element, we're going to add a couple of elements. Uh, for example, our bill amount. Um, we're going to need to add the tip percentage that we're going to uh, add to our bill amount. We're going to need an element to actually calculate the amount of the tip. And last but not least, an element for the total amount. It's also a good idea to usually seed this with a few uh, default values so that when you start your mobile solution, there is already uh, some data displayed to the user. So for example, for the bill amount, we can put in $100. We're going to tip 18%. So our tip amount uh, would be $18. And then the total amount of the bill ends up obviously being $118. So that's going to be our data model here stored persistently on each client device. And now we can start building our user interface. We're going to drag a label here into our design surface. I'm going to call this the tip calculator. And we'll assign the same name to this page here so that it all looks good. And for the actual uh, entries, we're going to put in a table. In that table, we're going to use two columns on the left side, some labels on the right side, the actual values. We're going to use four rows for these four elements that we want to present to the user. So now we can start connecting our data model with the user interface by dragging in uh, these elements. The bill amount uh, will make an edit field. For the tip percentage, we might want to do a combo box, for example. So we'll pick a combo box here. Um, the actual tip amount itself is the result of the calculation so that can be a label and the total amount can be another label here. Uh, might be a good idea to take all of these guys, control select them and click on right aligned so that they look pretty. We maybe also want to assign a number format string here to our calculated output. Uh, this one seems to be pretty useful uh, for displaying numeric values. Uh, such as dollar values. So we're going to take this as our suggested input uh, to format our, our resulting number values and make them look pretty. And then we can add some labels here on the left side. Uh, all we need is four quick labels here. The first one is going to be our bill amount. The second one is going to be our tip percentage. We're going to calculate the tip amount and the total amount for the user. There you go. Now, as I mentioned, for the tip percentage, I want to use a little combo box. So we can double click that and define the values to be displayed. Obviously, for a combo box, you can uh, populate them individually. Or and we're going to use a little bit of XPath here to automatically create a list of entries um, and it's very nice to do that here with our XPath build and evaluator. If I switch to the evaluator tab, I can actually see the results. So I can simply say uh, the XPath expression, I don't know, any value between 12 and 20 um, can be expressed in XPath saying 12 to 20 and here you see a result. Those are the values that will populate the combo box. So that's very useful to get that going. And last but not least, we need to add some calculations here. So if the amount of the bill is changed, we obviously need to create 
uh, new amounts here for our tip and total amount. And we're going to do that by adding a control action uh, for the on typing event here by right clicking on our bill amount. So any, every time the bill uh, amount is changed, we will want to update some other nodes in our data model. So the node we want to update um, obviously is uh, the tip amount and to calculate the tip amount we're going to take the bill amount and multiply it by the tip percentage divided by 100 we want the user to be able to uh, enter it as a percentage amount or pick it as a percentage amount from the combo box so we'll have to divide it by 100 here for the math to work properly so that's the calculation for our um, tip amount and we also want to calculate the total so for the total amount here we will simply calculate that as the bill amount plus the tip amount that we just calculated and now we can save our new design and give it a first trial run to see what happens so here you have your bill amount as an input, you have a tip percentage and your output seeded with the default values. We can go in here now and say our current bill that we may have received is just $80. And voila, these values change. However, if I change my tip percentage, for example, to 15%, you will notice that nothing changes. And the simple reason is that we have not added a control action yet to respond to a change in the tip percentage. So let's make that happen. We could of course go in here and add the exact same calculations over and again that we added before, but that would not be a very good programming style. Instead, what we want to do is we want to go here in our control action that we have defined and make that reusable. So we'll take these two elements here, right click on them and turn this into an action group, which is simply a collection of predefined elements. And we're going to call that action group re calculate and now we can use that same action group in our second action here so for the second field here the combo box we can say uh, control action on finish editing is going to be the same recalculate function voila let's try that out now once I change this here from 18 to 15 percent or 17 percent you can immediately see these values change accordingly. And all we need to do as a last step to make this truly stand alone is here in the project on the right hand side uh, on the server access select never. This ensures that the uh, uh, tip calculator once it's deployed to the client device never talks to the server again thereafter. Now we can save this and if you want to see how this same user interface looks on an iOS device we can simply switch over here uh, to an iOS device and then start the simulator again and here you have the same application running on an iOS device simulation so we can say for example a 70 uh, dollar bill with a tip of 18 percent and there you have the results uh, standalone application built with Altova mobile together designer thank you